It is an amazing day to just show up. Hi everyone, Yvonne Heath here, nurse turned author, speaker, and change maker, and your host. Welcome to Navigating Grief with Heart and Humor, where we talk about plan and prepare for grief, transitions, illness, end of life, and all the messiness in between, long before it arrives and diffuse the fear so we can live fully now, no matter what. Most of the time we've been in the deep trenches of grief, transition, crisis, trauma, and realized how ill-prepared we were. We did not have coping skills and strategies to help us navigate through. We did not allow joy or laughter in our sadness, and we want to do it differently from here on in. How? by talking about planning, preparing, connecting with kindred spirits and learning as we navigate this journey we call life. So I am so delighted that you have joined me and let's begin. I always start with, I wanna be fully present. I wanna land here. And so I take two slow, deep breaths just to quiet the noise, forget about all the other things that are calling me away. I wanna be fully here, mindful now. I want to share what you need to hear. And I know that I learn along the way, especially when I'm engaged and when I am really, really present. So I'm gonna take two slow, deep breaths, inhaling through uh, my nose, exhaling through my mouth. And I invite you to do the same or whatever ritual works for you. And I'm gonna close my eyes. Thank you. So as always, I like to share a fun fact and it, it is just actually so fun for me to think, okay, what can I share today? And as I was preparing for this time that we have together, <clears throat> I had cats and the dog and everybody <laughs> running around and I just thought, wow, I have always had pets. I don't know life without pets. Growing up, we had cats and dogs and guinea pigs and rabbits and well other things like frogs and grasshoppers that we collected <laughs> we've just always had pets and it was interesting when I married my husband Jordy I never had pets growing up and I just couldn't imagine life without them and so many people get that and those who have never had a pet don't and you know here's the thing when we are grieving in a crisis, in trauma, whatever it may be, I will tell you, pets give the most incredible, unconditional love. They know how to just show up for you. And so if you've never had a pet and you're lonely or there's something missing, I would invite you to consider a pet. I also had birds and rats even rats are amazing pets <laughs> so if a dog or a cat is too much consider a rat i promise you they're awesome and again whenever there is sadness or or just a time you you just need a, a friend cats dogs and pets are amazing and i will tell you right now we have two cats calvin and hobbs if you've ever read the cartoon, you will love those names. And our rescue dog, Sadie, who is a woodle, a Wheaton Terrier Schnauzer mix. And I wanted to make sure that my house was full of pets because I am sort of in anticipatory grief. As we're having these conversations, I know that our children, our twins, Jaden and Tanner, uh, the youngest, uh, our son Tyler is older and moved out many years ago. They will be leaving home soon. I need to fill my house with love. And that is what I have done. So I'd love to hear about your pet or if you're considering getting a pet, let's talk about it. All right, so let's move on for today. Oh, in my last episode, I shared that uh, COVID came to visit unannounced and uninvited. And, you know, I just, as I'm feeling better, I am so 
so grateful for my health. I am so grateful to feel better. And that's what illness can do for us, right? It can just really remind us what a precious gift it is to feel well. And also, if there are areas in our lives that we could be taking better care of ourselves, the time to start is now. If you haven't been taking good care of yourself, acknowledge and allow those feelings, that regret, whatever, and how can you do it differently from here on in? It is never too late to start taking better care of yourself. And today, I also wanted to touch on grief, joy, and the holidays. The holidays, whatever they may be, or special occasions, anything coming up, because of course, there are many of those throughout life. And I feel like Thanksgiving and Christmas in particular, there is tremendous grief for so many people. I can speak mostly for we folks here in, I never say folks, anyway, in North America, where we put so much pressure on ourselves around the holidays that things have to be perfect and we have to spend so much money and oh my goodness, I, I can't afford all of this and yet we do it anyways. Or I've heard so many people say, oh, this is so stressful and I have to do all of this stuff and I have to create this great big meal for everyone and no one ever helps me and you know what? I'd say no, thank you. What can you do to change that? First of all, no one can make, <laughs> make you take on all the burden of, of preparing big meals or spending huge amounts of money on gifts. We do that to ourselves and we set up that expectation. And, you know, I believe that we have normalized a lot of the wrong things. To me, no matter what you believe, no matter what religion, whether you Christmas isn't a religious holiday for you, it's still a time where people generally have time off school or work. So it can be whatever you want it to be. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we really got back to something more meaningful than stressful times and travel and I have to, I have to be with this person on this day or they're going to be upset. I have to buy 70 gifts. And wouldn't it be wonderful to getting back to compassionate communities, spending time together? And I have stopped purchasing gifts for the most part. I buy a few little things for my immediate family and everyone else knows, oh yes, your presence with a C is my present. Yes, I will just show up for you. I will spend time with you. I am not spending thousands, even hundreds of dollars on gifts, on things that people probably don't need and feeling very stressed about it. If we get together for meals and we will, it's potluck. Everybody pitches in. When it comes time to cleaning up, everybody pitches in. I do not create this big burden for myself or for anyone else around the holidays. And if you do that for yourself, I invite you, I invite you to reconsider and have those conversations. And if you are going to change something, yes, of course, there's going to be resistance. You've always carried everything. Why would everyone else want to start to help if you've always been the one? Oh, oh, she's so wonderful. She does everything for everybody. No, that's called being a martyr. I'm sorry. That's the elephant in the room. And it'd be wonderful if we all enjoy time together. Not just everybody socializing over here while someone is in the kitchen or, or wherever doing all the work. We've normalized a lot of the wrong things. And what can we do to change that? Again, for me, I don't travel all over the place over Christmas. I see who we can 
and that's enough. I spend time in nature. I spend time with my family. We buy a few little gifts. I make sure it's something that would be meaningful or useful. I don't just buy a gift to buy a gift. And I certainly do not do all the work myself. Oh my goodness. Let's create new traditions because, you know, our young people are also watching, right? They're watching us. Let's be a better example. Let's be a part of the celebration, not just the person that's in the back doing everything for everyone else. It's time to stop that paradigm. Let's shift it. Let's change it. Eventually, everyone will get over <laughs> the fact that you no longer do everything. The other part of that is grief over the holidays, right? As the holidays come closer, again, let's talk about Thanksgiving and Christmas. And there are people who have dying loved ones have an illness or they are grieving the death of someone, whether it is recent or years ago. And, you know, there's so many times you think, oh gosh, you know, should we invite this person? They're just going to be so sad and it's going to be hard to be with them. And well, maybe, maybe they won't come. And, you know, we, we put all of this pressure again, on the holidays that is just supposed to be joyful and let's not allow the grief because that's just going to put a damper on all of our joy. What if we invited it all? The grief, the joy, the messiness and everything in between. What if we were okay with somebody crying, having a sad moment, talking about Joe, I always say Joe, who died and we asked questions. I just had a conversation with someone who's, whose husband, and I know they were all trying to help, but the husband was getting so angry with his mother because all she would do was talk about her husband who died last year. And he'd say, mom, get over this. It's time to move on. They'd been together for 60 years. That's a lifetime. What if, what if they could just sit and say, dad, dad was amazing. Mom, tell me another story. And you know, if we invited the stories, if we invited the grief, if we invited all the messiness, the grief, the joy, the ups, the downs, the laughter, the tears, all of it, it does not have to be one or the other. It does not have to be all joy and pretending everything's fine when it's not. If somebody cries at dinner because their loved one isn't there. Isn't that okay? If it makes you cry, what if everybody cries? You probably end up laughing at each other. It's like, well, isn't this fun? If you allow the emotion you diffuse that feeling of trying to bottle it all in and, and, and pretend. So that is my very number one piece of, if I'm going to give advice or just some words of wisdom that I have learned from so many others. Allow all the messiness. Allow all the emotions, the grief, the joy, the laughter, the tears. It's okay. It's okay to forget for a minute that your loved one died and you're laughing. Oh, people say, oh my gosh, I can't believe I they died and I'm laughing. How wonderful. Wouldn't, wouldn't your loved one be so thrilled that you actually were able to laugh? I'm sure you cried enough tears, right? If you're struggling to leave the house and get all dressed up can you just show up however you're dressed does it matter does it really matter you know wouldn't it be something that you looked back on and say wow mom remember how you were dressed last year at christmas yikes <laughs> we worry about the wrong things so invite the messiness even if you are uncomfortable 
hey, mom, I know. I, I wish I could fix this for you. Tell me another story about dad. Tell me about your first Christmas together. What was Thanksgiving like? What was dad's favorite food? Let's serve that. Which brings me to number two, create rituals. You can create beautiful rituals, right? When someone dies, you know love lives forever. And the relationship with that person does not end. The physical part of the relationship ends. The spiritual part is forever. The love is forever. The memories are forever. So in this time, you can create rituals. And, you know, grief is weird sometimes. And grief is doesn't always have to make sense to you. And what is helping somebody feel better? <clears throat> Maybe you think that, that's not what I want to do. And that's okay. You do you, let them do what they need to do. Maybe they want to sit at a place for their loved one with an empty plate and their name tag. Maybe they want to make sure that they have their favorite drink or that they make their favorite meal or at least a dish. How wonderful. Have a little place with pictures and, and memorabilia. What if everyone went around and shared their favorite story? What if everyone went around and shared their story of, oh, remember when he made me so angry? <laughs> Whatever it may be, create rituals that are going to keep those memories alive, that are going to keep the person a part of your celebrations. Just because somebody is speaking about someone, doesn't mean they're not over it. And you don't get over grief. I don't, it, 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 it becomes something you carry for life. And the, the goal is that hopefully you continue to be able to allow joy and laughter and all of it in your life, as opposed to trying to, okay, now I'm over the grief and I'm not gonna talk about this person as much. And now I'm gonna move on with my life, no. It weaves into your life. It becomes a part of your life. And the more we accept that and create these rituals where this person remains a part of our celebrations, whatever we need is okay. And of course, as always, number three, just show up for yourself first. <laughs> Just show up for yourself first. If you are grieving and it's the holidays and you're supposed to make cookies and you just can't, allow it. If you need to talk about something and you want to share yet another story, ask a friend to listen. Let them know. You don't have to fix it. I, I just need you to listen. I just need to share this. Again, if you need to create a little altar in your home, if you need to walk and cry, whatever you need to do, allow it. Grief is not something to fix. Grief is something to feel. And it does become more acute over the holidays for so many people because we remember more deeply that this person is not here. We remember, and, and, and everyone's celebrating. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little COVID remainder. Um, everyone is, you know, the celebrations are amped up and your aloneness can be amplified. Be patient and kind and gentle with yourself. And please reach out to people who will support you. It may not be the people you think will just show up for you. Sometimes they just can't. Like that son who just doesn't want his mom to talk about his dad who died. He just doesn't know how right now. And I hope that they can 
forgive each other. There are so many people that will just show up for you, reach out. Please don't pretend you're fine when you're not. Please allow your humanness. Why wouldn't you be sad? Why wouldn't you miss this person? And it doesn't matter if they died 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It doesn't matter. Your grief is your grief. And if it shows up unannounced and uninvited and it's just really raging, it's demanding to be heard and felt. Perhaps back then, 10, 20 years ago, you stuffed it down. And now it needs to be heard and felt. And of course, for everyone else, when you don't know what to do, you don't know what to say, it's awkward, it's uncomfortable, and you can't fix it. Just show up. Just show up. Especially over the holidays. Please. Take your blinders off. Be part of someone's compassionate village, their community. Look around your neighborhood. Who's alone for the first time this year? Divorce, diagnosis, children leaving, spouse, partner died, their dog died, something. Take your blinders off. And maybe just extend a little extra kindness and invitation. And certainly for your family and friends as well. If we can see the holidays as a wonderful time of joy where we all get to celebrate and everybody is a part of creating this celebration. And we invite those who are grieving and struggling. It won't deplete our joy, you know, it just makes the experience that much richer, that much more beautiful. When you set, step back and say, you know, this Christmas, this holiday, this whatever it may be, Hanukkah, Thanksgiving, whatever it is, was so much more special because we just showed up or family, friends, neighbors, whoever, who were struggling. And we invited them in, into our celebration. And we acknowledged and allowed their feelings and their messiness. And we said, it's okay to cry. It's okay not to want to talk. You can sit right over here. You don't have to say anything. We're just here for you. And if they say no, that's okay, keep inviting them. Even when people say no, somewhere deep inside, I think it is nice to know that you would be included, right? You are included and you are welcome. Please let them know. Please let them know to reach out anytime. If we can get back to those meaningful, meaningful holidays and celebrations where we really, we really just show up for one another. And, and we stop the traditions that no longer serve us, that take away from our joy, that adds to our stress. Let's do that for one another as well. Let's create new traditions. Let's be that compassionate community and do what matters most. And to me, that is taking really good care of one another. I would absolutely love to hear perhaps a tradition that you might be changing, a ritual that you are going to create to celebrate in honor of someone you've loved and continue to love, to be the evidence that their lives made a difference so that they were always included in the holidays. 
And I promise you that that will be a beautiful new tradition for your holidays. So thank you so much for joining me at this time. I absolutely love being on this journey with you and know that we will always learn from one another and go to my website, loveyourlifetodeath.com. I believe my TEDx talk is very helpful, especially at this time, the times where people feel lost and they don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. They're just gentle reminders. And of course, you can always purchase my program, Get Ready for Grief, books, the I Just Showed Up movement, be a part of it so that we can continue to love one another, support one another, and learn as we navigate this journey we call life. So thanks again. And as always, I will share my call to action. If you want to be empowered, resilient, and happy, allow grief and joy in your life, especially over holidays and special occasions, my call to action as always, plan your life, plan your death, and then just love your life to death. And always, Bring your own tambourine to the party. Thank you so much. Let's continue this conversation in the next episode. Bye for now.